Hi, I'm Diane Coleman, and I'm sorry I can't be there with you today, but I want to share my gratitude for the gift of knowing Carrie Ann Lucas. Across the country, people who knew and worked with Carrie are still mourning. We watched as insurers denied what she needed, and doctors couldn't take the time to listen to one of the sharpest minds in the disability rights movement, explain how to fit their treatment with her body's needs. We're grieving and we're angry, but we're also honoring her amazing life. She made many unique and abiding contributions to the disability movement, so many that it would be impossible to describe them all. I'll just mention a few that I know personally. Carrie began serving on Not Dead Yet's national board in January 2013. Here are some of the ways that she worked to save lives through her incredible efforts as, as part of Not Dead Yet. First, the World Federation protest. In September 2014, Carrie traveled from her home in Colorado to Chicago to participate in the NDY protest of the World Federation of Right to Die Societies, their international conference. She was a very skilled photographer who visually documented three days of protest activities, which can be viewed by following a link on our notdeadyet.org website page about the protest. One of Carrie's photos is the banner picture on our homepage. Then Carrie took the lead in resisting assisted suicide in Colorado. She organized a group of disability activists to work with her to fight assisted suicide bills and initiatives, setting up a website for NDY Colorado, working with the media and more. Carrie and other Not Dead Yet Colorado members testified beginning in February 2015, as reported by the Denver Post, and the bill died in committee. That wasn't the end of the issue. The bill came back in 2016, and Carrie testified before the Colorado State Senate Veterans and Military Affairs Committee on February 23rd that year, stating, I want to quote, so good. I am a person with multiple disabilities. I have a progressive neuromuscular disease that has caused me to lose muscle function throughout my entire body. I am dependent on a ventilator to breathe. Without my ventilator, I don't have years to live. I don't have six months, six weeks, or six days. I have hours. I have a terminal condition, very much like ALS and I would be covered by this bill. I understand the sponsors have said, this bill is not for the disabled, but respectfully, the sponsors are incorrect. This bill directly affects me, my family, and my community. If I were to become depressed and this bill passes, I could go to my doctor and ask for a lethal prescription. Because I have a disability and because physicians are terrible at evaluating quality of life of people with disabilities, I would likely be given that lethal prescription. A woman in my situation but without my disabilities would not get a lethal prescription. That is disability discrimination. She also put on her lawyer hat and further explained what's wrong with the bill from that perspective. Carrie's full testimonies on our website. Again, the bill did not make it through committee. But next, assisted suicide proponents went for a ballot measure, which Carrie, the Colorado NDY group, and ADAPT protested by holding a funeral march covered in the press. Unfortunately, the ballot measure still passed. But as we all know, Carrie kept fighting. I'm sure many people remember 
when the ridiculous assisted suicide movie, Me Before You, came out. Carrie rolled up her sleeves and applied her graphic skills to pull together material from our sister organization, Not Dead Yet UK, and developed a banner and flyers that disability activists around the U.S. use to hold protests of the movie. The whole thing went viral with scores of press articles and opinion pieces. Many people sent photos from their protest tour, so she even put together a video of those pictures accompanied by Johnny Crescendo's brilliant song, Not Dead Yet. But of all Carrie's contributions to NDY's work, the one I think about most often is her leadership in the effort to save the life of 14-year-old Jerrica Bolin. Like Jerrica, Carrie, along with several of us in NDY, experienced teenage years as a person with serious progressive neuromuscular disabilities. Jerrica said she wanted to go to her very own prom and then die. There were media stories to raise money for her prom. She was not treated like a non-disabled 14-year-old would be. We were horrified as her story unfolded. Carrie wrote to a state agency that should have protected Jerrica from being put in hospice because she was not terminally ill. She was just disabled like us. Carrie was even interviewed on national TV news. But what Carrie received in response to her efforts was hate mail and even death threats from non-disabled people. And we were not able to save Jerrica's life. Carrie's work earned her center seat in the annual award given by New Mobility Magazine, which named those who sought to save Jerrica as People of the Year, the resistors. New Mobility said, in retrospect, advocates never had a chance against the prevailing tragic but brave, better dead than disabled narrative that saturates our culture. But watching so many fierce adults with disabilities rise up to try and save Jericho's life was like watching a pride of mama lions striding across the savannah. I wish I could be there with you in person to share how much we all miss her. In a drawing, New, Mo New Mobility depicted Carrie as the superhero she was. I hope you have that picture there today because that was Carrie leading the pride. We miss her so much.